Let's talk about bashing. If you buy an on-road car to bash, you're stupid. Why? Look at this. You can't do this with an on-road car. Your on-road car looks pretty, but it doesn't do anything. We're reviewing the Traxxas Max to see if this little French Bulldog and its proportions can match up to the legendary T-Max, E-Max, all the Maxes you can imagine. I'm going to start this off by making fun of the name, Traxxas Max. It feels like it's missing a vowel, like Vanna didn't flip it around and you're just waiting to solve the puzzle. But the real problem to me was, when you Google the word Max, this truck isn't going to pop up. Why? You have like 20 million years of Traxxas T-Max on the internet, which causes a problem for searching anything. I guess maybe if you use Yahoo or something that's never Googled anything before. Google, Yahoo, Yahoo, Google. Which one works better? I'll put down my dumb Google search problems for now. Let's look at the chassis. This, to me, looks like a bulldog, but not a big bulldog, a little one, which is why I referenced the French bulldog, because it's smaller. Everything's jammed into this potato-sized chassis, which is a plastic tub, still modular, still comes apart, still tracks as tough. But it, to me, when I opened it, I was a little underwhelmed in the size, and maybe it's just proportions. And that's why you see people immediately putting a wide-arm kit on it. Do you need it? Absolutely not. But the chassis itself is a somewhat X-Max design, uh, just shrunken down, put it in the dryer, and melted it down. It takes up to 4S. You do have to remove some padding to put the 4S pack in there. I guess that's a problem for some. I guess it might be. But it was really easy. And then uh, I don't recommend this with anything less than the full power at this point because why? Why put less power in when you have to buy a battery anyway? Unless you have a battery, you can use 3S. But use the 4S. It goes freaking 55 miles an hour out of the box. It's insane. Do people still know what body clips even are? Well, this truck doesn't use them, so if you didn't, you don't know what they are. The battery's quick release, it snaps in. Like I said, depending on the, the width of the pack, you will have to change the padding in there. Just make sure it's in their skirt, not bouncing around. You can see the plastic center backbone down the middle and those weird tags on all the plugs that are like thong underwear with a 12-foot tag on it. I don't know why they sell stuff like that, but it's there. Let's talk about drivetrain. You're gonna need a metal drivetrain and this has it in all the spots. It's the Revo 2.0, I don't, is that relevant either? I don't know. But what it means is you've got metal gears and sort of a torque vectoring differential that locks up under load. Uh, it's metal everywhere except for that plastic spur gear. It does have Traxxas's Kush Bro uh, slipper pad setup. It's not really a slipper, but it will take some shock out of the system when you slam down. This truck has massive power big wheels so it's going to hurt the drivetrain and you probably will break something let's be real here it's fast and, and pretty heavy so just be prepared to work on the car and that's kind of the cool thing about tracks that at this point they've really focused on maintenance and here's the whole uh, rear end drive setup and the diff in the back which has metal gears inside and riding on bearings and all that stuff and a metal tube down the middle they've really done a good job on this truck the tiny little truck it is Just another quick shot of the gears and the top part that says caution hot motor. Whatever, it's just there because I like the sticker. But uh, the drivetrain's pretty solid here, so bash on. Here's a shot of the rear suspension. Already people are lengthening the arms because they feel like the truck is too compact. And I can somewhat see why they say that because the proportions are very tight. The truck is... Not as big as you would look at like an X-Max or obviously, but a T-Max. So it's in between. It fits in the truck lineup. I don't know where. There's just trucks everywhere. It's like the new car market. It's just SUVs for everybody. All right, back to the features. Uh, you get a couple spots to change the lower shock mounting position. No upper camber link. No real toe changes to be made on this truck. So don't expect to be race tuning this. I mean, back in the day we did race these things, but this one's not made for the track. So it's just made to be beat the crap out of. The front end is similar. You get to see the big uh, Traxxas shocks, which are pretty rad, actually. I like the green. Um, not many location changes of anything. Plastic front hexes. 
and the steering links are plastic, which is the only thing I did break during testing, and we did beat the crap out of it running into a curb at 50 miles an hour. Isn't good for things. We found that out, so we tested that for you, but $5 fix, and we're back on the road. No big deal. Let's talk about performance, because that's what we're all really here for, right? Because it could look fancy, have a lot of features on paper. If it goes like a pile of poo, who cares, right? So let's get to the business. It's fast. 4S power, the stock pinion, uh, way too fast for most people. Even with the weird small proportions of this, like I said, the, the bulldog mentality, it's like an angry little fist. It's got super power, spins the tires. You can carry a wheelie until it starts to, to walk down the street. But overall, I was super impressed because speed cures all your problems with everything, except for on the internet and never fast enough and it breaks too much. One of the things you'll notice that despite the small size and squareness of this chassis, uh, the air control was actually better than I thought. I thought it would just try flipping over itself all the time. But, uh, and that's kind of why sometimes you see the pause in, in a backflip. Uh, you have to stay in it and it will rotate over fairly easy and front flip easy. Uh, a lot of times for video, we're kind of beating the crap out of things just for dr dramatic effect, to be honest with you. We're not this terrible of driving sometimes. Sometimes we are. But the nice thing is, it took a, a real big beating because we just, like I said, we just find stuff and drive into it. Does it, it going to look cool in a video? Is it going to make a cool photo? It, it handled everything. We did break uh, one little part. Like I said, we broke the front steering link from that little speed bump thing we were hitting at super speeds. Uh, it pulled out uh, the lower ball cup on the arm too, but it fi fixed in five minutes. So overall, this is just a fun-ass truck. And it's a full review in issue 39, Velocity RC Cars Magazine, like that thing says right there. We're a magazine, you read it on your iPad like normal people of uh, the times that don't know what body clips are. So we hear you, we understand you. So just read the magazine, subscribe, like, click, blah, blah, blah. Let's watch some crap beating out of this thing and... That's what we do. We just take dumb videos and talk about it while drinking coffee. That's what I'm doing right now. Peace out.